Welcome to Editor. Huh? Welcome to Editor. Oh, welcome to Editor. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. How about you? Hmm? How are you? I'm good. Sorry, I was just playing with my thingy here. Yeah. So what do you, what do you got there? Well, this is my Hasselblad 500CM. The front half of that. Yeah, so the, well, the camera itself is the box, right? Just this little box that I'm covering with the camera when I do the, uh, the camera. So just this little piece right here, the cube, mm -hmm. and of course the lens. And on Hasselblads like this, the shutter is actually in the lens. Yeah. Right? So and it's a leaf shutter. And then I have this weird back on it, which yeah. I can remove, just like any any Hasselblad situation. And you so got the I, dark I damaged slide. my dark slot. Oh, no, it got bent. It did. It got bent. Can we show the camera? Yeah. Wow. You know, you can punch in with that. Yeah. You can see that. But yeah, I got bent. It's okay, though. That's actually works. one of my biggest complaints about this nons thing. But it works just like any other, other Hasselblad back. One of the big benefits of these cameras and why they were like studio stalwarts, uh -huh. look how buttery my, my shutter is. That's a box. clean. It's, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. CL, a CLA, man. Um, the fact that you could slap on backs. Different backs. Different, different rolls of film. Even like like Tommy gun backs and stuff like that. Huge that. rolls, yeah. yeah. Um, you check sound, by the way? I'm, now I'm all nervous. But anyway. We're, roll, we're rolling on the, on the mic, so. Oh. Worst case scenario. And rolling on that, so. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, don't look at my serial number. It, Cause it's steal your serial It number. operates just like any old back, but then it has a trick up its sleeve, and let's, let's. So uh, this is from Nons. Yeah, let's take a blurry picture of you here. Let's go to your infinity focus, I just realized. So with these, basically, I'm going to set the aperture. Uh -huh. And it, there's a little release here to set it relative to a shutter speed. So in this case, I'm going to go 5.6 and 500th. OK. And then what's cool is that on Hasselblad's, what happens is that stays locked together. Right. So now it's As it you go maintains. to 2.8, it's the same exposure. Right. Um, and, and it maintains you, it. And so. you're just um, adjusting your depth of field at that point. Effectively, yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get you all the way back here. Yeah, more three feet away. Yeah. I'm a little less than three feet away, but that's yeah. as close as that. Yeah, and then so these go backwards, if you recall. And you're like right in focus. This isn't the way to fire a hustle, but we'll make it work. So once you have that cranked, and then you pull out your dark slide, pull out, and it, these won't fire the shutter with the dark slide in. So here's my dark slide. Now, if there was film in here, it would be exposed to light. Right. Except the body shutter is what's keeping it closed. Yes. So it's got a mirror in it. Your eyes are out of focus. So I hold. And re one of the reasons why you want to hold it is because if there's an offset, so you have two shutters. You have the, the, the lens Leaf. shutter, and then you have the body one. Uh huh. And so what happens is, is the body one's pretty much fixed to your finger. Yes. So if I release my finger, that closes. So if I have a long exposure... You have to hang on. I have to hang on. But anyway, what's cool about this thing um, is I just exposed that, right? But and what was the film in The that? film, let's make it work, turns out... It's Instax Square Film. Instax Square Film. So we'll go ahead and let that... Uh, this is going to be the shallowest depth of field uh, Instax Square that wasn't from a digital printer. Yeah. And that was the last frame on that, so we can talk about changing it. And so now I would slide the, the dark slide back in. And then again, that this is my least favorite part of this thing, is the dark slide slot is really finicky. I, I saw you messing with it too once. Yeah, you... you like, there's just a tiny bit of plastic, and I'm not sure, like, which one do I get it Yeah, because there's, like, multiple grooves, and you never know. But let's see if that uh, that comes out. I actually may have exposed this um, to light before. A little too bright? No, no, I'm saying oh, I may the, have exposed oh. it to light. Um, the reason why I know it's okay, well, while you were gone, I metered myself with my, in, you know, my ultra-famous Sikon. Sikonic uh, 478. It's an L478, and I, I think it's the U version. Um, I really want phenomenal light meter. I really want the color. Yeah, this one just does lux, so I can measure, you know, for the for the okay, brightness. Okay, I don't, I don't think it's in all the way. So did I? Yeah, get it's the definitely wrong, not I in got all the wrong way. groove. No, I think you're in the right groove. It's just maybe my bend is is preventing it. You kind of kind of got to wiggle it. But you could get another dark there we go. slide. Any of the Hasselblad dark slides will work, but it's it's in all the way, so it's fine. Well, wow, this but yeah, is this coming. This actually came this out. This is coming out. So, but yeah, I, I metered myself while you were here, and it's pretty much the same light. So, 
five six at five hundred, and the way I and the ISO for uh, Instax is eight hundred for Instax Square. So yeah, you just keep in mind eight hundred. Yeah. Now, did you notice that it has a little bit of vignetting? There is, uh, yeah, right around the the top and side edge. And then uh, one thing that you'll see is that as you get with, I have very long lenses. I have a two fifty. Yeah. Um, as you get with the long lenses, you, the vignetting gets worse and worse. Oh, uh, yeah. The wider lenses. So, Don't vignette. So what what was this lens we were using? This today? is a very classic 80 millimeter f2.8. So it's roughly a 50 millimeter lens to to full frame. Uh, yeah, it's a full frame equivalent. equivalent. Yeah, this is uh, it's one a of Zeiss. these. Yeah, it's a Zeiss. Planar. This is a Pla ultra famous lens. Planar essentially means that it's an f2.8, right? Yeah, that's their that's their terminology for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like Leica has their the the, the Summilux and Summicron, it's reference to what, the apertures that are available, the maximum apertures. Yeah. But yeah, um, I love this thing. We're going to do a more in-depth thing about it uh, very soon. This I, I got another cool. uh, camera. But if you recall, when you did the little comparison between yeah. the Evo Mini Instax you know, uh, hybrid camera that's and also the Leica. A digital, and the Leica Sofort 2, this was the secret camera that I also had. That you time. didn't, you were like, oh, I've got one more thing we need to talk about. And I'm like, uh, yeah. let me just make this video. And what I love about it is like, you know, for, what's interesting about Instax, like Fuji just released their, the successor to their by far most famous digital camera, uh, the, you know, TikTok Delight, which is the X105 or V. And the, now, the successor is now the X106. Yes. And it sold better than any digital camera in history. Insane. In any digital camera in history, if you subtract phones, phones are bullshit anyway. So, <laughs> so this actually came out pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nice. So, so the, uh, the idea is they sold all these, right? Mm -hmm. And you would think that Fujifilm is making just bank off digital cameras. Turns out they're not. Turns out, and if you read my long 6,000 word piece about the SoFord and the, in the Evo Mini. They primarily make their money. Off of this. Yeah. 80% of the company's profit and revenue comes from Instax products. Amazing. So that, these things, which seem like nonsense to everybody, but they bring so much joy. They're great at parties. They're great weddings. at weddings. We had we had two. You had a, your engagement Instax party too, or your, your yeah. whatever you call it. Um, yeah. And they were just Instax all over the place. It was I so I think fun. I spent yeah like five hundred dollars on Instax, which um, is I think worth it. Yeah, I think worth it. It gives somebody something physical, something tangible. Mm -hmm. To me, this is a way better business card. Like for me, I would rather grab Take a my picture. cheap SoFort two or not cheap. My not, cheap in Evo Mini. Yeah. Take a selfie with the person. And write your sign email it in the back. Yeah. You know, silver marker. That's yeah. just so, so much of a, of a better approach, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I hate selfies, so that's just saying something. <laughs> um, I don't hate selfies. There's a place for them. But, yeah. And I'm already pretentious enough as it is, especially with a fucking Hasselblad. A Hasselblad in Stax camera. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, like an oxymoron almost. But actually, that's the thing. The Hasselblads have become this like highfalutin thing now, but they were workhorse cameras. They were. This uh, is to this day. And they remains still, a studio stalwart. They still are because you can put a digital back on this. And they just released a new version, um, which is I think the 907X or something. I'm, I'm incorrect about that, but uh, but there is a newer updated version, and it, the new version of the body portion yeah. is is literally just a sliver. Um, so imagine this cube right here is like this wide on that cube. And there's just a, a and the lens digital on it. back and it's got a, it's just basically a lens mount. Yeah. And all the information is in the back and all the shutter stuff's in the front. Cool. And, and it's just this little it's I it, I would own one, but they're just too much for what I do. But what happened I, yeah. is film became so expensive for us yes. um, that we wanted to get more out of it. Mm -hmm. And we ended up not using this anymore. Right. And because one twenty like film two dollars a shot. Yeah. Right. And then it's like, did I get the shot or whatever? This is actually cool because like, just like we, just like studio photographers used to do with Polaroids, they do their reference on the Polaroids, mm -hmm. see how their lighting setup is and all that. Um, and even Polaroids had PC slots, like these, these little, remember these PC sync for, ports? For, for the your, sync. For, for your the, flashes. Yeah, um, for your speed lights. For your speed lights and for, yeah, for, for any kind of lights. But the, What's cool is I can use this for reference, but also it's just a lot of fun. And it like look when I brought this to your house for Christmas dinner, um, there was just your dad just had so much joy for it. He loved the sound of it and cranking it, and yeah, and it just like it brings joy to people, and I like that. I do think this is a bit big and goofy, 
mm -hmm. but also it's to me it's a lovely trade-off. I do wish they did more of the texturing to match the classic hostel. Block. Yeah, it's just that kind of uh, soft touch plastic. Yeah, which I don't love, but but and hey, I'll take it. And after ten years, it'll peel off and yeah. So I did have a hard time. You'll have to do. Yeah, it actually was better this time. So we're out of film. So the we'll last shot. Yeah, and while we're getting this, this, this is our uh, like interlude music. Ice cream, ice cream truck is here. And then you just match yellow to yellow, just like any Instax. So turn it ninety degrees counterclockwise. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I would drop in the back first. Dang it, I really goofed that. I did the same thing the first time. And then you close the back, and then you do the same thing, you eject, but you have to manually, it won't do you it automatically. You have to take a shot to get that first. You don't have to, you can just hit the printer button, because oh. this has no concept of what this thing is doing. Right. All it is is just exposure you expose to light. It. Yeah. And, and then so, it's like, okay, now push. Yeah, so, and it just does the, the act of ejecting that print. Yeah. That's all it does. It's a holder for the exposures and then a way to eject the that, print. The Hasselblad is still doing the exposure work. Correct, yeah. Crazy. So that's your, that's the, each piece of film has its own dark slide as well. Instax, tangible photography. Yeah, and which I think is a great way to put it. I love Instax stuff. I also did like the Canon uh, Z-Ink um, mini thing, whatever they're called. Yeah. I don't know, I can't remember what the printer's called. They have a new version of it anyway. I have the older version. Yeah. And I like those because they're they give stickers. you stickers. They're borderless, and you have options of like like different um, die cuts, so like circles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and the printer gives you a little bit of flexibility on how to lay stuff out and the, the software. But what I hate, what I liked about them, not hated, I liked trying to frame this in the positive, is that the prints look like. Yeah. They look way worse than Instax, yeah. and because they look so bad, they had their own fun about them, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're way cheaper than Instax. You can get much more for the money. So on the other end of film photography, uh, I'm, I'm working on a video on this, uh, but I haven't had a time. Are you doing any research? Hopefully you're doing some research. I wasn't, but I can't. I was just off the cuff it. I was just like, off the cuff in it. Well, so you know the, like, the context of that thing. But what is it? You, this, you found this on eBay? Yeah. This is the original GoPro. It is. Film camera. Yeah, so, waterproof film camera. So what gave me the idea was on your desk when we recorded at your desk, you I had, had my GoPro, GoPro 3. It's an old 3. Yeah. Which is really a tiny little thing and I miss the old days of the tiny GoPros and I was like, "You know what? I haven't seen an original GoPro in a long time and this big surprise about the original GoPro is that it's not a digital camera, it's a film camera. And really what it is is a waterproof fun saver. Yeah. That's effectively oh, what it yeah, is, that way this too. part. And then it's in a housing, and you gotta actually take this whole I did, I think I, I think I already. Yeah, you do it, because I don't wanna fiddle with it. But the, and it, it came with the strap. The strap was actually GoPro's very, very first product. Um, that's the thing that put them on the map, was their fancy wrist strap and action straps. Um, Whoa. Oh, what'd you do there? It's, it had the spring effect of the, of the, the film must have been slack. In other words, and you just sucked it all together. Did well, you just put new film in? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't down all the way. Damn. No, it should be fine. Keep going, just rotate it. If it rotates this, when you, when you, take a frame. And now, if it rotates, Now yeah, it's, it's rotating. Fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, Phew. Fine. Phew. All it was was just slack inside. Yeah. And you just pulled the slack and it was loose. But yeah. now am I doing double frames from the first no, it's nine you, shots. You may have done the very, oh, maybe. You may have nine frames on one frame. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it had ever advanced, but now it's advancing for sure. Yeah. Pushed it all the way down. Weird. But yeah, GoPro. So these are cool. Like, I mean, you could, we could do f film shots surfing and underwater and stuff. In, in the housing. In the housing. You <laughs> can do with this. But it really is just a cheapo. It, yeah. There's probably some model of this, like white label model of this. He probably he probably got it off the shelf. Yeah. Somewhere, and then the housing had to be poured and molded and all that stuff. And the housing works well. Yeah. Um, as far as I'm aware, the gasket was still good. It was new and sealed. In well, the, we've got a pool right here, so. In the blister packet. Yeah, we could. Uh, it's cold in March. I'll push you in and then <laughs> take a picture of you as you're all pissed off. Um, so that's my other camera. I did get another camera. Um, another another one. Which which is also a very throwback camera, but um, we'll talk about that another time. Okay, we'll come back to it. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I picked up a cool little toy, and you may have noticed that the wide angle confuse it is is moving. Uh, this is the Belkin Auto Dock Pro that uses Apple's Dock Kit and MagSafe to connect to a phone. I'm working on a full video on this as well, uh, but it, it tracks and it, any any camera app that uh, should be the same. Uh, uses the regular Apple camera system, feeds its data to this dock, and it, and it tracks it. So I'm actually recording in the Blackmagic camera app right now, and um, it, it should be tracking us. The only tricky thing is we are using the back camera. It's hard for me to see if we're still rolling. I've got to, like, check the back of it. Um, I was hoping you would stay there for a sec. Oh, you want me to That's stay? That's okay. We're good. Oh, yeah, you did it. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not very smart. But what I like about it that so is that I can use the Blackmagic camera app with this and get my Apple log settings and my exposure settings the way that I want them. But uh, it's not, like I also can't tap on someone's face and say, this is the face I want to track now. Mm. And it, do, it will eventually figure out that there's a two shot, that there's two people in the frame. And yeah, then, and it then is kind of getting us both. And it, both when you us. left to the restroom, it followed me all around. Yeah. It was really disconcerting, actually. It, it, it's a little disconcerting. And this is brand new. It just came out. I pre-ordered it. And actually, the week it came out, Belkin sent me an email like, oh, we lost your pre-order. You just need to order it. We'll never charge you for that pre-order. But but would you lose your place it. in line? But I, Actually, I think I got a better place in line because my pre-order said it wasn't going to ship until April. Right. And it's still March. And I have it here. They sent me an email like, we lost your pre-order. Go ahead and order it again. And I got it sooner than when I thought I was going to get it with the pre-order. Right. Hmm. Um, yeah, because it's here. But the main thing is, is like, what is? How is that different than a DJI? You talk loud. Phone. <laughs> I'm projecting. We're sitting super close. We're like way more friends than usual. Cause, we because we have this 85. We have this 85, and we gotta make sure we're. <laughs> it's like a hundred feet away. Um, no, but what is different about it? it? A lot of things, actually. A lot of things, because it, it'll work with the regular camera app. It'll work with the Blackmagic camera app. I I haven't. Tried the DJI Nemo app that you would use. It's good. With. It's good. I will vouch for it. it because it has all the extra features too. So, for example, it has the intelligence where you can select someone's face. The the, the Osmo Mobile, yes. And it'll track them. Um, it it does all a whole bunch of stuff. But also another big benefit is it's stabilized. Right. Whereas that thing's not. Not really. No. Some. It spin. It spins and it tilts. Right. Like like this would, but it, yeah, it's but not. But this a, this is being not stabilized at all. Outside, but it it, it the camera it's leveraging is, the the yeah. in body image stabilization of the iPhone at that point. Yeah, and then this has modes where this that thing I noticed it doesn't have another axis, so this will rotate to portrait. I I mean I could I could take the phone off and rotate it ninety degrees. Ninety degrees and the mag safe will, yeah will still hold. And and that was the main reason I got it is all of the marketing materials show it vertical, and on the front facing camera. And I wanted to know how does it work, horizontal and with the back cameras. And I'm I'm pleasantly surprised it does work well. Right. right. Um, but yeah, there's no like like the DJI app. It has DJI Active Track, and I can tap on somebody's face, and that's the person it's going to Even choose. Even an object, like to track, a, like or a an object, or a car. Yeah, not that you necessarily would with this, but. Um, whereas, even if I tap on somebody's face in the camera app or the Blackmagic that's just camera app, focus. that's just focus. Yeah. It's not telling Doc Kit this is the thing I want to right. track now. And then it also has all the standard appointments of a gimbal. So the DJI. joystick yeah. and you know, moving it around and yeah. special shots like rotating and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. The, um, but but it, it does have one annoying thing. It's got these magnetic clips. That, which allows you the, to use it with phones. They're actually super nice. The clips are really well designed. And, and a very and strong snap magnet. On beautifully, yeah. But if you lose that. If you lose it, which the person who borrowed it last did not return it. So we weren't able to use this thing today. We could have used it in the car. Um, and also I should note that part of the reason why they did that, it gives you flexibility, but also 
it, this thing ends up folding super compact when you don't have a big, you know. Yeah, and this is like a big Bulbous base thing. Yeah, what, what was that's that as Pokemon? big as like the syrup, um, you know, slider motors and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it, I mean, it just. I don't know how much, how long the battery lasts on that, but supposedly five hours. I think that's way longer than this, probably. Yeah, this whole this whole base is just a big ass battery. Big ass battery, yeah. It, and then which if, is it too? It's benefit. It if I use stable. this on my desk and leave it plugged into USB C, the MagSafe will also charge my phone. It won't charge my phone cordless. That's cool because it could end up being an actual charging stand at the worst case scenario. How much do those things run? That's that's the hard pill to swallow. This. Right out of the gate, no no special discounts yet or anything. It's a hundred and seventy dollars. Whereas oh my gosh, I didn't notice that I was playing with the lens and I thought it was still on five six. So you changed. I'm off by two stops on this. This is terrible. Uh, Instax film is not uh, not very much latitude. Not a lot of latitude there. No. Um, whereas currently you can buy one of these for a hundred and fifty dollars. And they routinely go on sale. I and saw they go on like, sale for a hundred bucks all the bucks. time. Yep, exactly. So, uh, oh, another thing I don't like about this, which I think would work on this, is I have like moment lenses. Too heavy. Can't work with the moment lenses. If it worked with the moment lenses, it would be awesome. I haven't got, I, I have a couple moment lenses as well. I haven't gotten the case for the 15 Pro Max. Mm -hmm. um, Small Rig's cage, they make a cage that works with the moment lenses, or I could get the moment hmm. case. I didn't know that. I know, and I'm torn. Is the cage universal, or is it really fitted? I think it's fitted specifically for the. They make one for the 14. They make one for the 15. Yeah, they have to make it specific because of the lens layouts and all that stuff. So yeah, and the the, the 15 mount. is just a tiny bit skinnier than the 14. Yeah. Although when Apple did all of its things that it filmed on the iPhone, they used the iPhone 14 Beast cage because they did not yet have a 15, mm. and the 15 fit in there. They probably they maybe needed to shim it a tiny bit. Um, I'm paying attention. I'm just logging my medicine. Oh, did you take your medicine? I, I'm skipping, skipping that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can turn into a werewolf. Oh, yeah. As you yeah. know. Yeah. It's my wolf's bane. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, I, it, I, and I keep going back and forth. Oh, should I buy the moment case or should I buy the, the small rig cage? Um, and then I end up not buying anything. So... <laughs> And I really want to use... I wish there was something universal because then we could have the same thing and share it. I know. I really want to use the, uh, um, the, the anamorphic lens. With, I still haven't tested the anamorphic lens with the Blackmagic camera app and Apple Log. And I'm not getting a 15 for sure. No, so. but uh, you have the 14 case. The 14, my 15, yeah. I might need to like put some paper on the side, a, a dollar bill on the side to shim it and mm -hmm. um, yeah. it could fit. Yeah. The dollar bill came up. The reason why I said that is because you got a flat. I got, yeah. So our next our next quick topic is we've been riding our Canyon bikes for uh, it nine months. Yeah, uh, these are Endurace ALs. They're yeah. the aluminum version. Really phenomenal bikes for the money. Uh, we're gonna do a full video on those as yeah. well soon. But um, what was the tire you initially? So you built these bikes. You got all the parts and you built them. Um, no, not the canyons. I didn't build. They weren't bike bike build full builds. They came mostly assembled. I did put it together, but you it put it together mostly assembled. So like the the fork was in and everything. You know, yeah, I didn't have to do all that. But I didn't have to run brakes or fill hydraulic fluid. Or oh, okay. Mineral Good. oil in the case of you know Shimano. Good. But uh, yeah, I didn't have to do all that. You but you did put the tires on. The tires were what came with it. Oh, that's what so it came with. So those are Schwalbies, yeah, or Schwalbe. 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 It's like a Schwalbe. Um, um, tires. And, and they, those are decent tires. They're not great. I have run um, Continentals, but yeah. Yeah. I And I went on a ride with my brother and my friend Ash, uh, and I guess I hit a piece of glass or something, and I, yeah. I sliced, it. sliced the tire and popped the tube. Um, so on the recommendation of my brother, I got Continental Gators. Gator skin, which is like th those were like the tires you had on there before were like middle ground, yeah. And the Gator skins are like way on the other end of the spectrum. They're excellent tires, by Kevlar, the way. but they're super reinforced for you know puncture protection and yeah. you get a lot of rolling resistance and a lot. They're slow tires, yeah, but they're very durable tires, yeah. Um, so I don't I don't disagree with it. It's just it's almost like a, you know, how like when you go in the house and someone's very cold. And then they put on the heat to like 75, thinking that just it's to gonna over... make the house faster. Yeah. Get warmer faster. No, it's really just gonna it's... bring you up to 75. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter if you put it to 70 or 75, it's still gonna heat the same speed. 
Yeah. Um, it's kind of like an overcorrection almost. Yeah. Um, but I actually still think they're great tires, so it doesn't matter. I'm overcorrect. You, is well, that because, what you're saying? I'm overcorrecting. You, you do ride long distances, and they are kind of un, they're they're hard, mm -hmm. and you're running tubes, so they are a little bit uncomfortable with that. And then there's there's a lot of rolling resistance in those tires, so they're slow tires. So what I mean by rolling resistance is means let's just put it in terms of like energy. We'll talk about energy in terms of watts. Yeah. You're going to be spending more watts or more energy to, to go do the, the same, same amount speed. of same speed in the same conditions. Yeah. So and since you ride a long time, that efficiency does add up, but it doesn't matter. You're gonna get you're gonna do get more exercise. Yeah. Like all all kinds of you're not a big performance rider, so it doesn't no. Matter. So they are I think it is a good solution in many ways. And I've only done one short, quick ride with these gator skins, and I at this point I can't feel too much of a difference. I so it is it is harder. I, I, I feel a tiny bit more I feel a little bit more of everything. Oh yeah. On the road. Oh yeah. But it's not enough for me to feel like yeah. I'm. Yeah. And as it is, your frame, the aluminum frame, it's not super stiff, like a like a high end carbon frame. So you're not. Yeah. It's not like you're getting some absorption from the frame too. Yeah. Even though it's uh, you know hard. To, it's a road bike. It's an endurance style road bike. Um, but the thing is, I have like the overcorrection in the other direction. So I have like super high end tires that are like soft and. Uh, well, they're tubeless. And they're also, they're, the rolling resistance is excellent. These are like, I think they're GP5000 TRS or something like that. Mm. So they're set up as tubeless. So right then off the bat, I'm running lower tire pressures, even though I'm heavier. Sure. So higher for me, but it would be lower even for you. Which yeah. makes, like when Richard rides it, and I can pull like 20 pounds out of it, because <laughs> he's super little, um, he he has this the most buttery, comfortable ride. Yeah. And tubeless has other benefits. Now, it wouldn't have helped you for slicing your tire. But, yeah. You would have had spray of, of the sealant all over. Goo all over. You run sealant in the tires. Yeah. Which could run technically in tubes. Um, and they're self-sealing. Yeah. Is the idea. If a small puncture happens. Yes. Would... And a lot of times people are like, ah, these never worked. And then I got, I hit one thing and they blew up and I, th it didn't work. But, but the thing is, you probably didn't realize it was working. How many times how many did, it, times, did yeah. it work and you didn't notice? And that, that's what I ran into in, uh, in um, Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, New Mexico. Where and your tire I rode through a puddle and also went through goo. a giant pot thing. And not only did I get a slice like that that was too big to seal, it filled the tires and the sealant up with water. It like kind of created Immediately a, caught water from the puddle. went out and then created a vacuum when I was riding more. So sucked some in, uh -huh. which made the sealant useless. Yeah. So that was a whole nightmare to deal with. Wild. And uh, yeah, uh, then we'll get. We'll do. We'll do a cross country ride another time. We'll, but we'll also do the debrief on that because we never really did. True. Yeah, but we need to hear the long, the long story of the. What a ride. Of the Gilbert and Richard across America. But it'll happen again at some point. I'm committing to that. So. Awesome. Especially now that I have, I just had a big surgery. Um, You've got time. multiple surgeries actually. Yeah. One like a little combo surgery. Yeah. Um, and yeah, how uh, are you doing? I'm still since the last time we we talked on on camera, you you were about to go into surgery. Now you've had the surgery. Yeah. It's been three weeks. Two My weeks. liver wasn't working, in case you're wondering. Um, and uh, we're trying to make it work. And you're here. You made it. Uh, yeah. And we're here. I made it. But yeah, we'll. well but I have a, a good another six more weeks of before taking I can it easy. start kind of feeling somewhat normal. Yeah, and then we'll find out if it recovered after about a year. So wild. We'll see. But cool. yeah, the once that's all done, maybe we'll start talking about. You know, I'll give you a little bit more time. More ride. Yeah, give more, me more heads up so I can go on the ride. Okay, so let's jump into. Or do we have any other like small bits to talk about? I guess I have. I have these glasses. I'm working on a video about yeah. the uh, Ray-Ban Meta. The battery the battery's low. I I've been wearing them for the last two hours. That is Three like, hours. Oh, but you've been like recording nonstop. Yeah, constantly I've been constantly hitting them. Yeah, if I'm truly constantly recording with them, it's only like an hour. But um, yeah. yeah, off and on, I've been uh, recording. Can I put them on? Do you mind? Well, let me charge them up, and then well, I'm gonna just oh, look. See what it's my it's my prescription. Don't look through them. Jesus, you're blind. I am blind. Um, Fuck. <laughs> I was gonna charge them up a little bit so you could ask the AI. Oh, let me goodness. charge them up so. You I mean, they went on. They're talking to me. And they're telling you the battery's low. I think. It went ba doom ba doom. Yeah. Do I look like an idiot? No. Those are good on Or do I say, hey, Meta? Okay, Meta. Uh, uh, it, it or, it oh, yeah? Okay, Meta. Sorry if I'm triggering. What time is it? 
Okay, Meta, why did uh, Timothy Chalamet give everybody chlamydia? At NYU. <laughs> it's, it's tripping out. Yeah, we, yeah, oh we need to charge gosh. him. Don't, I was just out. close your eyes. Well, here's, so here's the great thing. You can close your eyes. I got on the beta so that uh, we have the multimodal AI features. Um, so you could, you could just close your eyes, put the glasses on, and say, oh. Is it the same stuff that they give me in Instagram? Like the AI it's, access, the beta? Yeah, so I, the, so if you just say, with before the beta, I could just say, okay, Meta, what's the weather today? And yeah, search something on the web for me. Um, but now when the beta, it's the multimodal, it'll take a picture with the camera, and then it can tell you what it's looking, what you're looking at. It actually takes a still photo and then ping, s sends it to a server or something. Yep. And then, yeah. Analyzes it and sends you its answer back. Interesting. So yeah, because you were like, what am I looking at? And it was like, you're looking at a jewelry store or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. And so I guess you could close your eyes and just, just let the glasses see for you. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, that, that might be a fun challenge of the day where I don't, I, I go somewhere, I put the glasses on, I close my eyes and I just let the glasses guide me. You want to go back to the mall? No. <laughs> That's the worst. Help me, help me um, not get, uh, not run into anything in the mall. Mm -mm. No? Okay. I mean, we could do it somewhere else. That'd be fine. We go to the other mall. We go to the dead mall. Which one is that? Manchester? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, let's go. I don't want to get shot. Okay. Uh, I think that's all the odds and ends yeah. of, of this. Let's get into the, the deep topic of this week. Oh, wait. No, there's one more topic. Uh, Nikon bought Red. We haven't talked about that. I made that a video is, about it. Yeah, you made a video, which I think uh, it was a big surprise for everybody, including me. Yeah. Yeah, mind blowing. I was gonna tie. We were talking about cameras, and I was gonna tie it in. I, I had a seamless transition. The, the moment passed, and um, yeah, uh, and I've gotten to play with Brandon's uh, Nikon ZF. I, I have a video. I have it what filmed. I just need camera. to finish editing it. That's my game plan. Beautiful. I'm gonna finish that. Actually, that video might be out right before this video. I might finish editing that, and then I'll edit this. Cool. Yeah, I got, to, I got to play with it a little bit, too. It was nice. It's amazing. It's great. And then there's that guy on Threads you were replying to who... Scott was, Bourne. Scott Bourne. He's been taking all his shots on uh, mm -hmm. a Nikon. Scott F Bourne's a very famous ZF. photographer. Um, he's a well-known wildlife photographer for many, many, many years. Done a lot of other commercial work as well. I'm uh, surprised that, Olympus, like... this uh, what are they called? Like, Luminary of Light or Illuminator of... Jesus. I Olympinator. The Olympinators. But yeah, obviously they're no more, but he's, he's retired. Um, and he's big on, you know, bringing together the community. Yeah. Um, good guy. Good guy. Yeah. Born identity. Born identity. Okay. Main topic. The U.S. Department of Justice is suing <laughs> Apple. And you have actually sat down and read the entire complaint, do complaint yeah. document. Um, and that's what I do. I like to do that. For those of you who do who haven't uh, caught up, the the EU has won uh, some. The EU didn't sue Apple. The EU created, which is what the U.S. should have done. The EU actually created laws to say that, and there were laws focused on very s specific companies doing very specific things. But the laws were to say, hey, it's called the DMA, Digital Media Act. Compliance or whatever I can't remember D digital. I think that's what it is. I it could it may not be totally wrong But anyway, it was a law passed with multiple clauses that said they can and cannot do certain things with or digital markets act Sorry, oh, yeah, um, and in various digital markets and there are things like Apple's doing certain things to developers or Apple's not letting other parties play nicely with their devices or other app all, stores all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, you know allowing other app stores on the device or cloud streaming whatever um, the U.S. chose, and several states, mostly blue states, chose to sue Apple instead, yeah. which is kind of, you may, I don't know if you're old enough, you probably remember Microsoft, and your dad, I'm sure, remembers when they split up the, you know, AT&T, the Bell. The phone, the phone Bell. companies, yeah. Yeah, because, like, they, they were all split up. Um, I remember and now they've just re-bought each other back up. And, basically. It's yeah. all a circle jerk anyway. Yeah. But, uh you know, one thing that's interesting about the Microsoft one is they, they did try to do th things with Microsoft. They ended up doing this whole consent decree and it ended up getting appealed and a lot of it got unwound. That's right when Bill Gates uh, kind of retired, semi-retired. Right, right. Um, but that was basically the same agency, the Department of Justice, that, di that did that. And what they're doing with Apple is they're saying, you've done all these things 
Um, I have many comments about it, but the, you've done all these things that are anti-competitive, mm -hmm. which I don't disagree with. Sure. Um, and we need you to correct that. And they're using, they, they filed it in New Jersey. There's, a, there's reasons why that happened. My background, no, oh, never mind, I'm not gonna talk about my background, but I have a little bit of, somewhat of a little bit of authority to talk about this, but yeah. I still have no idea. What you have more than I do, and I'm just interested in your interpretation of what you read. So the, the, first, thing, the first thing that I'd like to say is like, it was written almost by lay people trying to do like a, I think the ATP said it better, they said it was like a book report, <laughs> like written by, to me, and I'm gonna embellish and say that it was written by a child in crayon. The, Having just read a Wikipedia article, and you know, Wikipedia is actually more accurate. So a lot of the things they talked about, in terms of like even the the, the original iPod and its story, they they try to spin the past as in micro, that Apple wouldn't have been as successful if it was not for that lawsuit against Microsoft. But then they for neglect to mention that it was appealed, and and there's a whole bunch of things. And they talk about they give you know five reasons why. Apple, basic reasons, some of them are total nonsense, but some of them actually I think do hold water, but I'm not gonna get into the specifics because I don't have the document in front of me, but I could quote from it and just, but just to say that the things that they're talking about are the last, almost the last things that I would talk about in terms of Apple. Some of them are just Apple being successful. Yeah. And then some of them are also like for example, the smartwatch stuff, I'm okay with that. Like if they, you know, other watches should have, be able to hook into iOS. But then what happens is, is like, if let's say they get 100% of what they want and ultimately get Apple to make these changes, I think iOS is harmed as a result and it becomes a less secure product for people. They're trying to get it to open up to now, do be I, less anti-competitive, but it, right. the way that they're asking for that to happen is so some of the specific things that they're asking for are opening up NFC access. Um, and so they, right now we only we primarily only use it for Apple Pay or or connecting to Dock Kit uh, with this uh, Falcon. Thing. That actually worked with NFC. So like my yeah. Sonos's work with NFC. I paid somebody that just used an iPhone to receive NFC, but I think Square can do that now. Yeah, the Square so they app, have, they yeah, have tap opened to pay. some of it, so I'm not sure what they're getting at, but really what it, they're saying is like bank, like let's say I have a Chase or a Bank of America or whatever app, mm -hmm. I should be able to do an NFC payment directly with that app, yeah. as opposed to using the card, which Apple becomes the intermediary. Apple Pay, yeah. So they, they're saying like Apple's interject, in, injecting itself and then that it makes it for a worse experience for users. What they forget to say is that they, they claim that it's less secure. I don't agree. First of all, the bank is often taking in more information mm -hmm. and they have way more information about what you bought, who you bought it from. Already. Whereas what Apple does, and yes, they are interjecting themselves and in, in ex extracting a fee for this and that's not necessarily cool, but they're, for the service that they're, I think it's fair because it reduces fraud on their end, but what Apple does is they tokenize that card. Yes. And they don't actually transmit any credit card information or any personal information. So it's, it, to me, it's a privacy factor, as well as a security factor, and you end up getting less spam, less bullshit, less tracking about what you bought. They don't know, it, they don't know you're pregnant before you do, that kind of stuff. So that's the stuff that I can't stand. And so they're talking about that. And then they're also talking about, like for example, um, app, smartwatches. And I have a Garmin smartwatch, and I, it does suck that it can't have as deep hooks as the, the Apple, Apple Watch, but also it still does connect and it stays pretty persistently connected. It's not perfect. Yeah. And then neither is the Apple Watch for that matter. It's true. Uh, but it still has way deeper access than security. Well, like for example, my Apple Watch can unlock my phone. Yeah. Whereas no but Garmin, your Garmin would wouldn't, wouldn't and I can't, let you in. I can receive messages to my Garmin, but I can't send them to, you know. Uh -huh. I'm sure they can make that work because they would just. Same thing with these glasses. I can, I can hear a message, but I can't respond yeah. to it from the glasses. And yeah. The little, the little niggles like that, they do bother me, and maybe Apple can back it off a little bit. But also, you may disagree, but Apple made the product, made, they made the platform, and they do, I do think that they have some rights, but what ultimately what they're saying, and I think we're, I actually think that DOJ is gonna win, even if they have a bullshit, uh, a series, bad like a poorly written take. document, because they're, they're, the, totality of the, eco, the totality of what they're getting, and I think this is what's the most important thing about the document, and I think this is going to be harmful for Apple in the long run, potentially harmful for users, more than likely harmful for users, um, 
it's talking about like not just one necessary specific thing, but like lots of little type microaggressions that Apple does all around the world. Um, one of the claims that they made is, and this is more than likely flat out false, is like Apple uses CarPlay as a way to lock other people out. Um, and a lot of people have gone on record saying, oh, CarPlay, uh, I wouldn't buy another car unless it had CarPlay. That's a, like a way common sentiment. Yeah. And, there's, and CarPlay is even nice. Apple, Apple has mentioned that, it, like I know Mark wouldn't, but Apple has mentioned that even in their keynotes that people say 70% or whatever, I'm making that number up, but of people wouldn't say they wouldn't buy a car without CarPlay. So what they're saying is the next generation of CarPlay like that takes up all the screens. Yeah, even the, the dash screens, all your dash, not just the you know, center yeah. console. They're saying that Apple is strong arming automakers and saying you have to support all of it and give us access to everything or you don't get CarPlay access at all. Yeah. And because they have that, they've been trumpeting this that like people won't buy a car. And, and GM has announced 2026, they're not gonna do yeah. CarPlay. They're no longer doing CarPlay. And meanwhile, GM currently is selling your driving data um, yep. to insurers, um, yep. although they said they're not gonna do that anymore. Um, but still Please Kia don't. is and some other companies are. Um, basically, they're saying that Apple's strong arming. Now, if they are doing that, that's bullshit. But it turns out, like they can, they need to give people access. They need to give Apple access to the car's data, mm -hmm. and Apple treats that securely and doesn't sell it, doesn't you know do anything against that. Right. But they need that access, and also the car manufacturer can still have their own dials. They don't have to support all of it. They can just you know use regular CarPlay. Yeah. So I don't actually know if that's 100 percent true because for all I know, Apple is strong arming people. They strong arm people everywhere. They strong arm developers. They do mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. They don't give people API access. They charge a load in the app store. They they inter they prevent you know tons of there's tons of anti-competitive stuff that app, they could have used that's more specific. Yeah. But I think they kept it general and and general purpose because I think they wanted to capture the greater sentiment of all of the ecosystem of what Apple's doing as a whole company that actually does make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's to me it's strong in that way but still i think overall weak and i think they have the problem is is they have enough what what they have to do what you have to do in any antitrust case in america with the sherman act is prove that apple is a monopoly yeah and they have to by proving to prove a monopoly you have to define a market mm -hmm. and you have to say okay so the market is this and apple dominates this much of it in proving that apple has 60 to 75 percent of the market depending on which part the way they define it because they define it in a couple of different ways in general generally speaking i think they, the number was 65 percent um i could don't quote me on that but the they're saying they're 100 percent of the iphone market yeah exactly <laughs> they're saying apple and they actually said apple and samsung have the market, but Apple itself has 65% of the market, and then they redefine the market to say for performance phones, it's even higher. Like, so now there's this new market called performance phones. And, you know, what they're doing is they're saying, like, Apple phones are, you know, higher quality. Mm -hmm. Then they talk about the, they talk about uh, the, the plight of the green bubble. Um, right. Which I think is actually, texting. bothers me a lot, actually. I, it, it, it does make people not be able to change. And they they say they talk about, um, and so like a lot of people don't understand like when you text an Android user or some uh, some other platform classic you, SMS texting it only goes through SMS and the mm -hmm. SMS is a very old protocol um, that I hear a bird I always got to look um, <laughs> the SMS SMS is a very old protocol that doesn't support a lot of the fancy features that WhatsApp has and Messages app has um, WeChat RCS you know. RCS is a protocol that's a, the next generation protocol, mm -hmm. but what those apps are using is d data, effectively, their own data. Yeah, and iMessage, WhatsApp, It WeChat. also doesn't support encryption, it doesn't support higher resolution videos, it doesn't support like typing status, it doesn't support groups very well um, mm -hmm. in the same way. You don't support, it doesn't support tapbacks, like where you can like respond ha -ha. with a, a ha ha or whatever, or even a sticker or whatever like that, it doesn't support stickers. It doesn't support um, group FaceTime, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's all kinds of things that, that uh, it doesn't do. That, you know, RCS gives it a little bit of a leg up in terms of all those, those niceties, and it's a more, it's a universal standard that Google's deploying, and then Apple says they are going to use. And they probably did that preemptively, because they knew this legislation was, or not, it's not legislation, but this case was going to be filed. Mm -hmm. They are probably ahead of it. And they're making all kinds of little changes, like they've changed fees, and, and then of course now they're, 
they're going back and forth with the EU about whether or not they're complying with the DMA. And the DMA compliance, it, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinions, is malicious compliance, meaning that it's like every single thing they're doing is with a f you. Yeah, the, and the uh, EU's alternative app stores mm -hmm. rules, they made such a complicated mm -hmm. pathway yeah. for you to create a... Tons of interstitials, they make it super difficult, they make the limits super high for developers, and they say you gotta have like a million euros in the bank, like all kinds of other crap. There's so many little things that they're doing to make it difficult. And the and they're the so the EU is going back and forth with them saying no you're not compliant you need to change this you need to change this so they keep on having to change things before it gets written in stone, yeah. Um, which I think is the, actually the the correct approach rather yeah, than trying to sue them because the problem is if you sue them, it doesn't. It's first of all it's hard to enforce whether or not they're actually complying. Yeah. And then it, they can delay and delay and delay. There isn't a law appeal it's, appeal you know, appeal. And what happens is that you create case law. And so you have the codified law and you have case law. Mm -hmm. So case law is basically when people say there's precedent for this, they're saying that there's prior cases that have dealt with this issue and it's already been decided, so we're going to decide based on that. So because even if Apple's the best citizen and they're 100% honest, it still doesn't mean that they're not anti-competitive and doing things. They're doing what's in Apple's best interest. And when a company gets so big, you have to really look at it differently and say, okay, it may have been okay when you're up and coming, but now that you're this big, you need to dial it back and give some other people a chance kind of situation. And the problem is, is like, first of all, they're, they don't have, in my opinion anyway, and I, what the f do I know? They don't have enough of, uh, of the market itself mm -hmm. to justify, especially because Android, literally there's more Android handsets to this day. Still. Right, right. But in terms of controlling the market, they control the vast majority of profits. So that's one big factor, mm -hmm. the actual revenue from the market. And then it's also extremely sticky. Android's a little bit more flexible in terms of using, but don't, don't get me wrong, Google does a lot of the same shit. Keep, but what yeah. would case law would do is it would, ha if Google got sued as well, they, they, would, that they would look case. at that and say, you know, this is the right, but if you make a law, you gotta just follow the law. Yeah. So it's like straight up. Like, so it should be like, figure out the laws rather than trying to let some random ass judge or some stupid DOJ people that have no idea, you know, um, about technology. Outing about themselves this. by the lack of knowledge in their... Yeah, what's funny is it's going to suit. affect them too. Maybe they're annoyed that, you know, Spotify can't, you know, is not hooked in. Interact and, with and their HomePod too. in the same way Apple Music does. Yeah, and they, they do so much stuff like that that pisses me off and lock people out and headphones can't have the same rights as AirPods and stuff like that with fast switching. It's not even in the same menu, like a quick menu. You gotta go through two menus instead of one. It's still faster. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, and because AirPods suck now. Yeah, but I mean they're still fine for what they are, but they, they're just for, not nearly as reliable. First as, gen AirPods useful. were the only one of the greatest products ever made. It was revolutionary. You mentioned case law. You forgot about the third law, which is Cole's law. <laughs> <laughs> my God, he's gonna punch in on that. I bet my. <laughs> um, so the problem is like. You have a, they're going to have difficulty proving that Apple's a monopoly in the first place, right? Because there are legitimate competitors. So really what you have is a duopoly. Yeah. You don't really have laws that address duopolies very well. No. And it's like the, the duopoly can just as well be anti They could operate as a monopoly and effectively control the market. Yeah, almost like uh, the, the way cable companies do uh, mm -hmm. Comcast versus... Well, the uh, difference is like, and I'm going to get to that actually, but, the, but just in short, the difference is like, Comcast laid all the pipe. Yeah, but so. they but they specifically will will they have a duopoly or triopoly with um, uh, Spectrum, which and, and Cox. That's but, just other and they, and they just using the same infrastructure though. Or but they but then they specifically stay out of each other's way. Yeah, they're dividing up markets so that you can have competitors. But the but the argument. So we're so let's talk about the next thing. The next thing is like. So what are some classic monopolies that are legal monopolies? And they tend to be utilities, right? Yeah. So phone lines, rail, mm -hmm. uh, cable, stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, gas, electricity. Gas electric, yeah. Um, and you t there in America, especially, there tends to be, and uh, even if you try to deregulate it like we did in California, which sent things into a tizzy, for better or for worse, so there's lots of different perspectives on that. But like, the problem is, is like they laid out. They, it's like I laid all this track. Mm -hmm. And you want, you're telling me that I put out the cost to lay of this track and you want to be able to run anybody's trains on there? And it turns out, like, when you get to a certain 
size and, and you can and you're effectively controlling the market, well it turns out like you do got to be dialed back a little bit because then you can make decisions unilaterally. You can, you know, so yes, I get that. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and the question in my mind is, has Apple gotten to that point where it should be treated to utility? And I think it got, yes, actually, um, in a lot of ways, because they are, they do control so much of manufacturing. They control so much of, of so many resources. Um, like they buy up TSMC's production capacity for three nanometer chips, you know, for, and they, you know, so other, you know, people can't get into it, and like there's so much stuff. Apple's a tough nut to crack. If they're gonna throw their weight around against you, there's not really yeah. anything stopping them. And what we haven't dealt with in big tech is like, what is the point when a platform, right, that they built, mm -hmm. that they put all this investment and time and effort in. Is it a track? Is it a electric electrical lines? Grid, yeah. Is it a power grid? Yeah. So like, when does that platform become so big and so essential? Like Apple's like argument though is like, well, you don't have to be on a platform. You could be on Android, and they're kind of the same. Google's another massive it's company throwing their weight around. Things. And yeah, you could say, look, well, you could you could. There are third party app stores on on, on Android. Have you if you don't if you don't have an Android <laughs> phone. Try installing a third-party app store and installing third-party apps. It's a bunch of another series of hoops. It's a pain in the ass. It can be done. It's it's doable. But they throw up all these interstitials and all these red flags about it. Warning, you're installing an unsupported app store. We can't yeah. control what these apps are going to do on your phone. So meanwhile, Apple's saying, like, okay, the app store, we want to ensure the security of the app store for our users. But in reality, there's so much spyware on there. There's so much bloatware on there. There's so many scam apps on there to this day. They get outed for it all the time. There's always a, some bullshit app, prominent app that makes it, you know. And the same thing about security. An, an app, an app that ma makes you cool-looking AI photos of yourself, but in the background, it's mining for Bitcoin for someone else. Precisely, and yeah. it, it gets past the app review all the time. And another thing they talked about was, um, you know, remember Beeper? Um, yeah. So they allowing iMessage on uh, Android phones. Android phones through uh, servers. Well, some through some were through servers and some were through uh, faking. Uh, um, they use literal Mac Minis, and so the idea was they actually had Macs that were being signed into that, that were Apple just pushing ID. that stuff. They were yeah. just rerouting. That was it. the first the Beeper Mini thing. It was faking, spoofing serial numbers, and then which is super illegal. But also, like, but in super gray area. I shouldn't say super illegal, but super gray area. But the the. The way they get around it is by literally having a Mac tied to a user, mm -hmm. they could send a blue bubble. Apple shut them down effectively. So the government was like, you can't do this. You know, you can't do that. Like this company made, gave a solution for others to have the same rights as any other message user. But again, what they're forgetting to mention is like- They're violating the terms of service. Forget of the, the terms of service. It's super f***ing insecure to spoof stuff like that. Right. It's, like even if, they, even if it was like the most godlike company in the world and they were like doing this great service for people it's it makes messages super insecure yeah. it gives them it opens people up to so much vulnerability vulnerability if that if that i our mac mini server farm were to be infiltrated and yeah. in everybody's messages. or they could be reading your messages the, the employees you yeah. know the same way apple's contractors were listening to siri conversations you know no big deal but the they were caught for that but the but it, to me, it's like they are they do have a point in that one regard, but then also like they're claiming the app store is a more secure space and they can't you can't sideload apps because of that, but they're not doing a good job as a platform owner of enforcing that. Mm -hmm. And so you, they can't have it both ways in my opinion. And I do I will lean toward more security and a better experience for users. I'm not always convinced Apple's giving users the best experience. Um, I've talked about headphones. I do think smart watches should have a, a little bit more connection to the phone. Yeah. Uh, other smart watches. Um, I would prefer Apple to adopt RCS and, and make, stop with the green bubble, blue bubble bullshit. Uh, so we did a demonstration of this and, then, and uh, like because you, some people don't understand that like when you send somebody, uh, a, an Android user, a video, you're looking at it on your phone, it looks beautiful. When they receive it, they receive a potato. A, p a postage stamp of a, yeah, of a video. It's super pixelated yeah. comparatively. The quality is severely reduced. Yeah. You try to do a tap back and it comes up as like a description in Android. They kind of improved that. It used to be way worse. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it's intercepting that 
S well, it's intercepting that SMS, reinterpreting it as a tap back. Yeah, if you drop a sticker on, it sends it as like a just, just a, a picture. big picture, so you have no context with for what it has to do with, mm -hmm. um, and all kinds of other stuff. It's there's tons. It, like it almost like it's it's like blue bubble privilege in a way, and that's why a lot of people like they are embarrassed, like because. So I I I, I um, photographed a, a bat mitzvah recently. Yeah, let's we'll call it that. Yeah, and I ha there was like you know. 13 year olds there. Yep. And I said, I asked straight up, I said, so what are you guys using to talk to each other these days? Um, and they I were like, they were Snapchat. like, I was like, do you use Snapchat? She goes, no. And and I, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what people use. She goes, messages? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. But yeah, they are just straight up using messages. It's a big deal. In the and they're excluding their deal. friends with green bubbles. Yeah. They're just not in, they just don't get to be in the group chat. So then they, they also talked about this thing called super apps. And by super, we don't really deal with that here. It's kind of what Musk wants to do with X, uh, X which is make it formerly a, Twitter a catch-all app that does everything. And they're really, and this in, is like a WeChat. In China, app. WeChat is yeah. the super app. You you message, but you also order your food, you car, order order your car, your everything. Instead everything. of Uber or Lyft, dedicated apps. Basically, you you turn on your phone and you just open WeChat. Yeah, or, so you, or like, WeChat is just always running. It's like a WeChat. Your phone is a WeChat portal, effectively, mm -hmm. and they can't do that on iPhones there. So it's actually harming uh, the service. And also, so we don't have anything like that here. And yeah. of course, Apple doesn't want that because everything's routing through them because it's all payments and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, Apple's interjecting themselves, and they claim it's for security. And to me, it's like... Kind of. You're, yeah, get, you're it, getting there, it, but it's... It doesn't have to be one thing or the other. It can't be like a profit motive. It can, it can be both a profit and growth motive, and it could also be security. Mm -hmm. I often think those things are at odds when, for example, they tell the developers, you can't advertise or you can't ask for reviews or anything like that. You're not allowed... If people turn off ad tracking or whatever, meanwhile... Don't do it. I get f***ing... Subscribe to Apple TV, or have you seen iBooks? They're or, not following their they're, own. They're not following their own rules for, for, for notif those notifications. Yeah, yeah. And then they, you know, I search for one podcast player, and then theirs comes Apple's up podcast. first. Um, and they jump to the top of the list. Yeah, you search or, Overcast or Pocket Cast in the App Store, and Apple's podcast is the first app. <sighs> yeah, that stuff really bugs me. Yeah, play by um, like they can't play by their own rules. It's and also it's just like they think they deserve it, and I think in a way they do. But also, like the fact that they're interjecting themselves into so many decisions or so many transactions, if they are providing security and privacy, I do think they, that there is value there that they should be paid for. Yeah. Right? I think, like for example, like if I'm a developer, they're taking 30% of any transaction that I do. That's steep. There, yeah. are, there are lots of ways to get it down to 15%, mm -hmm. depending on your size, depending on your your user base and transaction history and gross and revenue. Yeah. A whole bunch of different things, but. It's very difficult to, and but also, uh, I do think they should get some of the payment. They're the payment processor, like Stripe. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they everything is much more secure. It's way easier for the users. Of course, they've made it that way. Mm -hmm. So, and but also, Stripe is super reputable. You know, Square is reputable. Like I also trust them to, you know, yeah, to support my security. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, I think a lot of what the DOJ is doing is asinine. But I also think that Apple needs to be. Push in the right there direction to. There needs to, to be a little it. fire under their butt. Yeah, I don't mind that they're being. I, well, I do mind that they're being specifically sued. I think there are better ways to approach it. Like the DMA is a better way to approach it. It's also not very well executed, but it's still better it's than better. just being sued. Yeah, because suing it just leaves so many things open ended, and it takes forever. And it's like, what are they? What is the compensation? But they want so they want to enjoin Apple means compel them to do certain things rather than have some sort of compensation or settlement, mm -hmm. which I think is. Uh, the right idea, but hopefully that negotiation of what they are forced to do is going to be ongoing forever. And I don't think it's necessarily going to benefit users in any way. Yeah. And that, that bothers me a lot. Yeah. It seems, it seems pretty misguided. Yeah. But also Apple seems pretty misguided of late. And, you know, I disagree with a lot of the things that they're doing. I think the institutional hubris is off the f***ing charts. Um, I think that they're unwinding major projects for which they've spent tens of billions of dollars in R&D mm -hmm. that just show that there's a, a lack of, there's no blue ocean there, there's no, there's nothing ne next for them. They're talking about spatial computing. It's bullshit. Uh, they, they're like, you can see the future. No, you can see the present. And it's pixelated and noisy. 
And, <laughs> and it can't see your fingers in the dark. You know, so let's, 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 let's change gears. I'm done talking about okay. the AJ. Right. Thank you. I did return a second Vision Pro, though. Yes. Did you want to talk about that at all? Just briefly. You just, uh, so we made our whole video. We're returning the Vision Pro. We got day, a day two Vision Pro. You had it for the two weeks, made your thoughts. Uh, shared your thoughts, mm -hmm. returned it, but then you were having the surgery, so you thought maybe Let I'll me... watch movies on it, you yeah, know, something like that. But also maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's some magic that I didn't capture. So I picked up a second one for you. You did, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> I thank you. For and it. once again, two weeks later, yeah, it's it's, it's a, back back with Apple. And I firmly believe that it, I'm going to go on record here saying it's not a good product at all. Like I, I give it, I give it like a five out of 10 or something like that. No, I give it more like a three out of 10 now. Now that you've spent another two weeks. Yeah. With and it, it's, it's not like the amount of time I've spent in it is trivial over the month. I, it was literally, I had hit over a hundred hours on the first one. Insane. So I was basically living in that thing. And the, the second time around, I didn't do as much. I did more like 50, 60 hours. Yeah. Over the two weeks, but that's not trivial. I, I get it. There's times when I had the Vision Pro sitting there and I still wanted to use my Quest, just yeah. because it's not it's not fun in any way and there isn't much to do. And what's to circle back to the the kind of the hubris, I think that a lot of that has been impacting developers mm -hmm. and their decisions that they're making with respect to developers and how they're treating them has severely harmed the future of their newest platform, which is that which is Vision, Apple Vision. Yeah. Or Vision OS. Yeah. And I think that the idea is they would have done much better if they got more people excited and didn't ship what was effectively a development kit, a yeah. fancy one at that. Expensive, fancy dev kit. You know, the pri and this is privilege speaking, you know, and I don't even think I have this sort of privilege to bandy it around, but like, the, and, you know, I'm returning it and getting my money back. <laughs> Thank God, I'm not just keeping it to be cool. <laughs> to let it become Fuck a $4,000 paperweight. It was like $4,300 after tax. And Apple Care. And Apple Care only did the $25 just to have something for the month, just in case yeah. I dropped it or something and, and didn't end up screwing myself. But you also got the one terabyte model instead of the two. Yeah, because if I did end up keeping it, I would not be caught dead with 256 because one of the, <laughs> no, seriously, one of the biggest uses for it is movies and yeah. media. And I know from lots of experience with iPads, offload it. I do a lot of local media, mm. but. Again, all the same things I said last time. Watch that episode. I tore them to shreds. They deserved it. They they all still apply, mm -hmm. except it's arguably even worse because now, like, I didn't have the rose-colored glasses, mm -hmm. and I was opening approaching it from a different perspective. The one biggest thing about Meta, the Meta Quest, first of all, it's Meta, so again, it's a privacy thing, and all the actual benefits that Apple brings to the table. Like Apple, Kyle is, I think, nuts for having those, but they're cool. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I am nuts. And we will, I actually want to talk about those in the context, but I'll, so I'll keep this little bit short. But all the privacy things, well, the one thing about Meta is they announced that, well, what they're missing, I should say, is the movie watching experience, the continuity of it. Yeah. Even Apple is still, yeah. because not all, all these other companies that are major streaming companies don't want to be on board with it. Mm -hmm. So you have to like use the compatible iPad app if they've even allowed that, and a lot of them haven't. Yeah. But anyway, the cool thing about Meta is they said, they basically said, hey, we are, if there's rumors that they're partnering with LG. Mm -hmm. And I use WebOS as my main nego negotiation of my media. For your TV. For my TV. Yeah. I have Apple TVs. I think they're good. I think they're the next best thing. Yeah. But there's also just like a whole f***ing layer of extra stuff that I don't need. And WebOS is, gives me three modes of input that's perfect for all ages in the family. So I can have like a Wii remote to move the cursor. Mm -hmm. You have it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a wheel. I have up, down, left, right. Yeah. I have number pads to jump, put in passwords and stuff like that. And it's way faster. Like I've done side by side, you know me, I've done side by side comparisons yeah. on just getting to something and launching it and starting a movie, even on Apple TV mm -hmm. plus and launching it and starting a movie and watching it is faster on WebOS. It still sure. supports Dolby, still supports, you know, H, you know, HD and other HDR standards. Dolby Vision, and Dolby, Dolby Vision Atmos, is Dolby Atmos and, and HDR10. HDR10. Plus, plus. It's, 
Yeah. You know, all the apps still are good citizens. Apple even has its own app on there, so I'm still Airplay able to. Airplay. Airplay still... works faster sometimes because sometimes, for some reason, I don't know why. Even on the latest Apple TV 4K, um, Airplay doesn't just want to. It does. Sometimes it doesn't. It, it'll go on and then blank out. Yeah. It, I don't know why it does that, but it it works way more rock solid on the LG. Um, I can't do things like Apple Fitness and integrate it with my watch. Um, I'm not really doing that much anyway. I could use my iPad if I want and mirror it to the to the thing. Um, so what else am I losing? A game, a games, our Apple Arcade. Which Apple we don't Arcade. Do. Does the LG have a like reduce loud sounds yeah. compression? Like I haven't found yeah. it where it is because we've been using the Apple TV more than the LG Web OS. One, I know the the remote of the Apple TV um, is controversial but it's, it is it's it is the worst it is less buttons what is it what is does lauren do when when you want to watch tv together so what does she do if i if i'm in the house she throws it at me and says you do yeah and exactly and <laughs> but it, the lg the lg remote does have more buttons that are extraneous and i think she finds that one more uh, it's intimidating intimidating it can be yeah um although my, but also my literal four-year-old was using it you know at the time at his age and he was fine yeah so but uh, yeah, I we turned on the reduced loud sound setting on the Apple TV, and Lauren way prefers that. She's a little more sensitive to you know to sound I'm, and stuff. I'm I'm lucky that I have a Sonos setup, so my sounds coming through the Sonos. So even you if it didn't have it, I can EQ the Sonos. No, it actually has all those features built into the theater settings. Oh, okay. So I can actually do like a night mode mm. where it reduces loud sounds and also enhances dialogue, mm. and it actually works well. Um, there's like a little moon button and a little dialogue button. Yeah. So we have a Bose sound system yeah. and it's just whatever it's a sound bar yeah yeah it's getting from the tv uh, yeah the, yeah. the R e arc um and yeah i couldn't find in the lg like a a night mode or a reduced also, also, uh, we have the same tv basically the same os i think same os same generation we have a c10 or something like that c9 yeah i have the 55 inch you have the 77 inch something like that yeah yeah but um yeah, show me. C10. We'll have to take take a look at that. But I do I do love the the screen. But I Phenomenal I like screen. the Apple TV. Uh, no, no. Interface. Don't get me wrong. The Apple TV is fine. I'm just saying the Web OS is faster. Yeah. For us, it's faster and it's more universal. And it it connects to my server mm -hmm. without a problem. Have you ever done any of that? I don't know. I don't have yeah. any server. So like, there's a one of the apps in there is like photo and video. Mm -hmm. You photo and video, it boom. All my DLNA servers, like all the, even even detects all the Sonoses. I could like send stuff to one Sonos from it if I wanted to. Oh, it's yeah. kind of weird because looking for hosting <laughs> content. Yeah. So I have to like scroll through. Like, well, yeah, I've got all the HomePods. Uh, it won't see those. Yeah. So I. So. I'm yeah. Sorry. And I don't have a. Um, um, you can. A, a, a oh, you don't really of, run a Mac Mini or anything on the side. No. Yeah. I just have my MacBook and then I take it with me. So. What I, you have? What do you have? I don't. I could you could use one of those like old IMAX or something. You can do that <laughs> and just have it. I have um I'll set you up so good. I could I I do have on my network an Airport Extreme still set up and I don't have a drive plugged into that. Could mm -hmm. I could I plug a just a dumb drive into an Airport Extreme and It used to work because you could run that through Time um, Machine. It's, well, no, Time Machine is just the backup portion of it, but you could run um, the TV app will see your iTunes library. collection, your library. So I could have a library on a drive plugged into an yeah, Airport sure Extreme. Could. Yeah, um, it will be really slow though. The Airport Extreme is no good for that. It's very old. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm basically just using it as a as a one gig. You switch. have? Don't you have an old Mac sitting around? Not anymore. No. Nope. What the hell? We'll make that. We'll fix that for no, you. No, no, no. We'll make it work. Make, I don't want a server. That's too much to think. That's too much of my you, brain. You don't think about it. That's the beauty of it. It's just I, there. The, the, until it doesn't work. 2018, I've been running mine. It barely turned off. I did just have to replace the fan. On your Mac Mini On server. my Mac Mini server for 2018, just running, just running constantly. I, I thought, oh man, this thing's dying because the fan was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and I, the swap literally, this is not an exaggeration, was less than five Twist minutes. the bottom off. Twist the bottom, slide the, the thing, you know, the fan, the fan comes out, then you could slide out the whole logic board. The fan, boom, boom, but I did end up going further and replacing all the thermal paste and stuff like that. That oh, was an ordeal. Yeah. But it, it's still very it's very serviceable. The RAM is user replaceable. You could I mean, I'm not saying you have to go do all this. I could set it up for you. It's no big deal. But the but the you'd have all the your content. Like and I you get my offline my content. 
I have, I have thousands of whatever, and it's all legal too. I've ripped it all myself, like over years. Yeah, yeah. So, which is crazy. Got all my Actually, DVDs. I did uh, download all of MythBusters. Right. You've been watching. You've been watching MythBusters in order with the original Jamie and. Here's the beauty Adam of it. Host. These people, whomever created this download, which probably is like all the spyware and it's like all porn. Probably. And now you're. Yeah, I'm now like you're being mining Bitcoin and... for them. And, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> these people. Cut out all the interstitial bullshit and all the little like cutaways and stuff, and reorganized all the myths so that they're in line with each other. Nice. So that they're not jumping from one to the other. Right, like a, like the TV show did, which is so. You annoying. just go all the way through one myth and then all the way through the yes, other. Yes, because they put all the MythBusters on. Uh, I tried to buy it, by the way. This is why I downloaded it, because I don't I didn't have any streaming services. And they don't sell except it. Apple TV, because it's part of Premiere. But the. They didn't. They don't sell it in any continuous way, and they skip seasons. And I wanted to pay these people money, to and watch they it made it order. difficult. Which is what Apple solved with iTunes in a way. You know, they made it seem just as seamless. To Ninety-nine have. cents, a dollar ninety-nine for yeah. an episode. Australia doesn't, it doesn't work that way season. with video, and they've shot themselves in the foot by being that same that le same level of strong arm and hubris, is what caused them to not be able to work well with the other with the studios. But anyway. <laughs> and it's just continuous. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so much more efficient, and yeah. it's so much more pleasant watching the show without it jumping around to save like commercial time and keep people hooked. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Reality uh, TV editing, baby. It's a 287 gigabyte file. An unediting reality TV editing. <laughs> yeah. And can you imagine the amount of work? Yeah. Can you imagine the, the amount of work that went into that. Send that guy 100 bucks. I would. <laughs> I would. And I'll, you know, like, and Apple will take 30% of it for some reason. That's a fan edit, yeah. Um, but, but the, the, it's really cool. Like, I, but yeah, anyway, I like WebOS. It's very fast. Why did I even bring it up in the first place? What uh, were we talking about? The speed, uh, Apple's hubris and the speed of things. Yeah. And well, I mean, again, like, the Apple TVs are fine. Yeah. Um, I think they really are the next best thing. They take up an input. I also discovered that the Xbox interface is pretty f***ing good. It's very fast too, but you can use your controller. It works I, with my LG remote. Yes, yeah, I use the, my LG remote literally when yeah. I want to watch a Blu-ray. So I have a series. What have a series X? Is the yeah. power I have the rectangle previous one. generation. One S. Xbox One. Even one S. Yeah, um, and it's fast. It's great. Really, I, like I wouldn't know. I only play Blu-rays on it. I, I'm blown away. Uh, so I don't know. You know what's funny? I I, I heard a comparison uh, between the Apple Vision Pro being like the PlayStation. And the Quest being like the Wii. Oh, I remember why I brought it up. So there's a rumor going around. I said the Quest, uh, you know, they don't have the media experience. Yeah. So I use WebOS. From LG. From LG. LG TV. And there's a rumor saying that Quest, the Meta, is going to bring that LG experience to the, the Web Quest. WebOS. Nice. That could be cool. Which means that all of LG's licensing will carry over. All of their existing relationships and apps should carry over. This is all perfect world scenario I'm describing. Yeah. Who the hell knows what they're going to do? Will, will, would that happen? Who knows? That's, that would be amazing because if you think about it, they're, like, they're, they're, the resolution of the Quest 3 is actually pretty good. It's nowhere near as good as the Vision Pro, but it's good. It's good, yeah. It's totally watchable. I watch movies on it often, and I download them locally, mm -hmm. and totally cool. But if they made that, if they made that the experience, it would be absolutely awesome. And what's amazing about it, think about this, WebOS, even the tvOS, WebOS is already very well designed for interaction in VR. Because it's, it's already, it's already, got already point, designed for pointer. a Wii remote. Yeah. You know, so you can easily navigate it with the pointing controls. Side thing about my quest. Remember I had the Touch Pro controllers? Yeah. Return them. Oh. They were very good. Yeah. They could uh, see behind your head. They could see behind my head. But it's just, it's $300. Couldn't yeah. justify it. Damn. Uh, I also returned the Elite strap. Overkill. Oh. The, the the regular strap is fine. Yeah. It's just overkill. You can't so, lean on things too. It has like a bul bulge. So you just you essentially just have the, the stock, standard stock Quest, Quest 3. 3, not even the Quest Pro 3 Pro. No. Quest 3. The Meta Quest Pro. You did get the larger storage size. No. I messed up. I oh, got, got the wrong the standard one. Standard storage yeah. because it's five hundred bucks, six forty nine for the the five twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, I do keep stuff local, and I'm actually almost always out of storage. Like yeah. you, 
<laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> you did better this time around. I'm great. Look, mm -hmm. I would. I think we're still rolling. Am, are we still rolling? It's trying to follow. Yeah, you. it's still rolling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we it's did. like it's like it's like Wally. Yeah. Um, the uh, how many times did our thing stop because you ran out of storage? And no, it was because I because I launched the camera from the from the lock screen. Yeah. Not because it because it wasn't unlocked. Now that I I almost record everything in the Black Magic app. I have to have the camera unlocked, yeah. the phone unlocked. Yeah. So it doesn't really happen anymore. I've solved that. Now I should go back to daily vlogging. Yeah. Now that I fixed this. I just remember you had to like delete your deleted items, like like fully delete them, and it's just that and, happened once. That <laughs> happened once. <laughs> That's it. You're branded with it forever. Now. And now I'm that yeah. I'm that guy. You are that guy with no phone storage. No, you got, you're fine. There's millions of people walking around with no space on them. Yeah, phones. thanks to Apple, like selling stuff with five gigabytes of iCloud to this day yeah. and 256 gigabytes on the highest Standard. end phones. Yeah. Like selling a Mac with 256, I think is, and eight gigabytes of RAM, I think is highway robbery. And then you, you spec it up just like one little thing and all of a sudden it's 20% more expensive. Yeah, the DOJ yeah. should do something about that. I don't think they're gonna do anything about that. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. Oh, so anyway, they compared the Vision Pro to the PlayStation Okay. And they compared the Quest to the Nintendo Wii. Oh. And how it was like so much more fun and approachable. I disagree. There's so many ways I could tear this comparison apart. Of course it stops right there. We're going to yeah. stop too. Um, There's so many ways I could tear this comparison apart. But it did make me think like the, the thing that I keep coming back to with the Quest and you know, f*** meta. But the thing I keep <laughs> coming back to with the Quest is that it's so much fun. It has so many flaws. Yeah. But it's fun. The Wii had so many flaws. It was 480, mm -hmm. like standard def. Mm -hmm. it, everybody already had widescreens back then, and like it, yeah, but there was widescreen mode, and it, 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 it would boxes. squeeze it, and then you would un, and then your TV would unsqueeze, and like yeah, yeah. anamorphic. It, it was ridiculous. It had the, the bars. You had to add on the thing to make it more accurate. The, the IR bars, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then the, yeah, the add-on to the bottom of the Wii. Yeah, remote, so like the, the Wii motion remote, plus. Motion plus, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Those were the days, but you, people, it, everyone was able to use it. Everyone had one party. Yeah. Every single party, people playing boxing. Or, yeah, or and it was super fun. Bowling. Breaking TVs. Yeah, what you do throw with the MetaQuest too. On there, you break TVs with that. TV. Yeah. You know, because you can't see where you're going. Yep. And I just enjoy it. I really do. Um, now that you know, move the Meta Quest, the Meta Move, whatever the hell it's called, Quest Move. It's like their uh, health app in oh. there so now it it has like similar to the apple watch where the with the bar with the, the, the rings. rings and it you could say i want to do this many sessions i want to have this many exercise minutes, and it sends it to apple health it integrates oh it does so i get it'll say like fitness gaming cool and it works so like so you you don't start that on your watch nope. saying i'm going to work out no it just feeds that yep. to and it feeds it as a workout properly cool. which is great and then i get the little notification i do thumbs up I guess. In my, in my Apple yeah. controlled iMessage yeah. reply. Well, I mean, I'm glad we got to do this. Yeah. Uh, just to wrap this up, one last thing. You got a cool little doodad for writing. Oh, yeah. Where is it? It's in your bag, I think. Um, I'd love for you, now that my glasses have charged up a little bit, I'd love for you to put them on, close your eyes, look at it, and ask it what you're looking at. Okay. So, what is, so what is this? I disliked the Vision Pro so much. Now, you could argue the Vision Pro is actually a really good focus device. Yeah. People are trying to position it as a multitasking device. I think it's really bad at that. You have content all over the place, but you gotta like look for it and stuff. Yeah. So really what it ends up being, like you put yourself in, in the you know the, the environment and you close out the rest of the that world. That I think is by far the its strength. Yeah. Closing out the rest of the world, which makes you does make you feel more isolated. But I got the the antithesis of the Vision Pro, which is one of, I call it the Hipster Right 2000. The, the Free Right Traveler. It's a Free Right Traveler. It's by a company called Auto House. They're a little boutique company that makes these little keyboards um, with screens on them. They're e-ink screens, and I'll open it up, and then the e-ink screens. Oh, this is Kyle, and what it is is just this. I it, get to play with it just for a little bit in the car. Yeah, it's positioned as like a focus device to help you focus on writing without distraction. It does connect. It to Wi-Fi. Connects to Wi-Fi. 
Do you connect it to your phone I, as a hotspot to like when the, you're out in, and let go? The, I haven't done that yet because I just got it. Yeah. Um, the too, first one I got actually the screen was shifted over 50%. Like it was like this content was here. Yeah. And so it was like wrong. So I had to have it replaced. Uh, but I bought that one on eBay. For, and then the company because these are like five hundred dollars. They're five hundred bucks. The company honored the warranty. Even though you weren't the original. Even though it wasn't the original. Sent me a brand new one in the box. Mm -hmm. And then the eBay seller was cool. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then refunded me some money. <laughs> so I spent way less than 500 bucks on it, which is great because I think 500 bucks is, is quite steep for this. I did look on eBay. There's someone selling one for about 300, 350. And so what's cool is like when you have the Wi-Fi on, it's syncing to their little service called Postbox. My camera just went off. Okay. Um, I think we're still rolling here. It's syncing okay. to a little service called Postbox. Mm -hmm. And it supposedly Postbox is encrypted. That's what they tell me. I did ask them multiple times. <laughs> and then Auto House is a nice little company. But basically, the idea is I write a ton already. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying, like, I'm going to get this so that I could focus on writing. That's not really my purpose for it. I don't have any trouble writing. Yeah, you write. I write a, a lot. Um, and so usually, I easily average 1,500 words a day, easily. Yeah. I mean, especially if you count messages. The mark I've. Yeah, Mark, 1,500 right there every day. Easily. Um, I think our, our statistics show that I have 50% of the words in the Mark. I, uh, that, I, yeah. I would not doubt that. So this is, does it solves several problems for me. It makes it a, I'm not going to go deep in this, but basically I have a better keyboard. My Magic Keyboard's fine. It hurts my hands. Though. On your iPad, the yeah. The keyboard here is more like those old Lenovo or the IBM ThinkPads. Yeah. Um, it's way better. I don't have to have my, the little my, pointer in there. My middle. Sony Vio from 2001. That had a good keyboard. Uh, yeah, this, a lot it, of it feels a lot like that, too. I like it. Um, the keyboard's great. It's These full, are scissors full size. Switches. Scissor switches, yep. Yeah. They're scissor switches. Um, not very serviceable. It's the, the fact that it syncs persistently is great, mm -hmm. but then it, it does bring the battery down to supposedly about a week. Um, whereas uh, with the Wi-Fi off, you're getting several weeks of battery life. Amazing. So is that. Second thing is, I actually write when I'm not a hermit and being crazy, which I'm kind of coming out of that. <laughs> COVID did a number on me. Um, I write outdoors a lot. Yeah. And we we opened it in the car. I was like, look at that. I, with my sunglasses on, I could clearly no see glare. the screen. Zero glare. I'm outdoors right now. It's great. But also I write in the bath. You it do. doesn't have a backlight or water, a front light. It's, it's not, not waterproof. waterproof. Doesn't matter. Whatever. <laughs> Sorry. I write in the bath, and in the you have a, like a tray that goes across. No, I have your... no tray. Now you just put it on your knees. Yes, not my knees, more like my thighs. But the, the I have my iPad on a bracket. On uh, stuck to the wall. And if I try to use up. a laptop to write in the bath, because don't don't judge me. Don't do that. If I it obscures the iPad. Oh yeah. Whereas Screen's, this your 16 inch screen's too big. Well, even my M1 Air. Yeah, still skewers. But the this iPad. thing, so this thing what is this? Five inches, six inches tall. Yeah, it sits right below the iPad, so it almost looks continuous. So it's like, oh, you're supposed to use it as a distraction-free device. No, I don't give a shit about that. I don't have trouble writing without distraction. Like I, I can write all day, and and I love doing it. I, I do have trouble like crafting stories and writing a book. That's very difficult for me. Mm. Um, but it sits right below it, and what's cool is like I can draft long-form content on this. And it's already synced on the iPad, so like I wrote messages to the archive, and they're just popping up, and you just and grab I just it. grab it and drop it into the archive. Yeah, and then also it does sync with other services, so like I have it also syncing to Google Drive, mm -hmm. and it jumps over to there, and then also um, I have I told you I have like a little back end automation because I have a server. You're right. So I have on my Mac Mini I have running um, Hazel. So it sees the, the folder get populated in Hazel because it's talking to Google Drive. And then it pushes it into the IA Writer folder, which then syncs Mark, back over iCloud. Markdown writing. So then all of a sudden, because I think I do everything in Markdown. Yeah. Um, what's, what's, so it's awesome because it comes out, and then it's already an I, IA Writer. Mm -hmm. So I can just continue on my iPad and, and so on and so forth. Now, um, will that sync back? I can do that if I pay for the Plus service, which mm. is 40 bucks a year. Mm. I don't care to. Yeah. I, I just want this to be a place to or originate text, but that's one. Two is I want it to be another tool in the arsenal that gives me variety for my hands. Yeah. And three is I want it to be something that's more portable and can ride in the car and travel, fits better on an airplane tray. 
I wish um, I wish this was white on the outside. The, do you the see black, how what a fingerprint glossy, magnet? The glossy is? black. It's crazy. What is this? Uh, 2003 with the yeah. Nintendo DS Lite. I wish it also had an SD card slot. Oh, for offline. So I could do the persistent backup. backups uh, locally. It does have a USB C part. That's uh, for charging. Charging and data. You can so sync. I can mount it as a drive and pull the stuff off manually or put stuff in manually. Oh, okay. So it does can do that. Uh, yeah. I don't really care to do that, but it does support power delivery. Nice, quick, thankfully. Quick charging. Um, it's got a bunch of like weird uh, key commands and and stuff to like do, to, to do power user type stuff. Yeah. Like you could even manage the documents in here. Eh, you could also do it on Postbox. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but the idea is like, I'd, if I were writing a piece like a Vision Pro review or whatever, mm -hmm. I would do one section per document, and you just tap new, new, and you create a new document. So it's almost like if you use the app Scrivener, oh, um, yeah. I do it the same way. Like every chapter is a new document, yeah. and then this way I can rearrange them and mm -hmm. rearrange concepts. Mm -hmm. There's no co copy or paste on this. Wow. They're getting around. You move a cursor slowly. So it's all about plowing through. Yeah, just get, get yeah. the words out of you. They have another tool called Sprinter. That's part of Postbox, and Sprinter is a tool that just—it's all about like having like writing sessions. It even has like this timer on the side, <laughs> where you can, you just—and then what happens is if you write in Sprinter, it's already in Postbox and it's already in here. Uh, so okay. I could theoretically take my stuff, copy it for free, copy and paste it into Sprinter, edit it, and it appears here, and then continue writing to here. Yeah. There's also a send button. Yeah, I saw that. What, what would that? I hit that. It just email me, emails me the document, and you can oh, okay. choose how it emails it. Uh, PDF text file, so mm -hmm. regular plain Dot text. .txt. I have it in all Markdown. .md. .md. Yeah, because I prefer working in you know in Markdown files. Fine. Yeah. Or plain text. RTF. No uh, RTF, just plain text. Rich text. TXT. Yeah. No, no rich text. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, there, there is no real formatting. Uh, no. You'd have to do it in Markdown. I do. Language, and, yeah. yeah. And so I, I just think so far, I, five hundred dollars really tough spend. You better know what you want and know that you, or maybe need you need something to focus. Whatever. I really enjoy this thing. If there was like it's a two hundred dollar version of this, and maybe the keyboard's not as nice, but the e ink they screen, do have a three fifty one. Yeah, it's not e ink. It's LCD, mm. and it's called and it's the like, Alpha. It's like one of those old things in the nineties that schools use. Yeah, like the what are they? The Alpha Typer. Right Neo. Or yeah, whatever. like it, where it's just a keyboard with a screen on it, almost like a word processor. Mark Mark had one, a different kind. Yeah, um, or Alpha Smart Neo. Um, it's like that, but it's like a rectangle. It's got a, a the keyboard's not as nice. And apparently. it doesn't close. It doesn't it's, close. It's just a flat. It does slab. have feet that brings it up, but yeah. which is nice. But I prefer flat actually. Personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it's not for me. The keyboard is not as nice. Mm -hmm. The thing that got me about this one is the keyboard and its clamshell. It closes. So protect feel, the keyboard and the screen. Yeah. Whereas that and also that one has a shorter screen. Yeah. So let's do let's do your test here. So yeah, put these on. Don't look through it, and just say. I'm, I'm gonna look through it. Ask Ask Meta to. Uh, I just killed my first. Tell you what you're what you're seeing. Hey Meta, what am I looking at? So trying trying to do the Meta thing, it launched. It launched the uh, the Meta app and killed killed the video, and the Sony battery died. We only had a what seventy percent. Yeah. Or uh, or, maybe it overheated. Wouldn't that be funny? It's beautiful outside. Yeah. What is it? 63? Can you imagine if it overheated? It I hope it didn't overheat. Why? What's the big deal? It, it would be embarrassing. You're right. I that's why I hope it didn't overheat. I hope it if it did, I hope we know about it. True. If I want to know. Yeah. But, but yeah, the battery probably died. It was it was going the whole time. So yeah. until it wasn't. True. Well, anyway, this has been Editor. I'm Kyle. Oh, what did I say before? I'm the hipster right 2000, because that's what it is. And uh, you know. The world is a hellscape, but we're uh, helping you navigate through it, I guess. Yeah. We'll see you next time.